Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be playing around with the die cut in our art journal page and this die cut is from Scrap FX and I'll leave the details in the description box below. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just starting off um, creating a background for my page. Now I have to force myself to use my craft pages in my Dina Wakely journal. And then when I do, I actually quite like them and think, why don't I use these a bit more? So I was being really loose and just playing around with this. I had um, painted the page, you can sort of see peeping out through on the craft and I'd quite liked how the paints had gone on. So I thought, oh, I'll just play around with it. And I'm using marine and blushing and carnation together. So this is a sort of new color combination that I hadn't used before and I really, really loved. I saw someone on Instagram playing around with this color combination. I thought, oh, okay, go outside of the comfort zone, have a go. So I'm just sort of painting on the background. The first layer of paint I put on was quite watery. So that marine was kind of more like a watercolor in the background using just um, a really wet brush and then to get a little bit more opaque color on it I actually just spread the paint out with my finger. Once I'd done this though it's like yeah that's nice Neve but what are you going to do with it because it's a just a blob of paint on the page so to control it a little bit I've got a stencil out and I was putting some stenciling over the background. Now unlike most pages I do I had a little bit of an idea of what I wanted to use as a focal image on this page. So um, I had already on another journal page um, prepared this die cut that you'll see shortly. And I really, really liked it, but I hadn't actually used it anywhere. So I thought, okay, well, you know, you can use that in this page. So I've kind of got everything over to one side because I knew this die cut was quite dominated. It's quite a large image. What I just did there, you obviously saw I had a little bit of paint where it wasn't supposed to be. So I used my wet wipe to dull it down. And I also used my wet wipe just to wipe down the edge of my word stenciling, just to soften it off a little bit so it wasn't so um, rectangular on the page. And it still kind of is. But another way that I um, was kind of trying to overcome that was to get this stenciling of the stars over it. You can see I didn't stencil in every star. Um, it was just sort of like a scattering. Again, to sort of lead your eye down into that corner. So it sort of goes from the top left-hand corner down through. This is die cut that I was talking about. Now, when it originally comes, it's just black. I've actually added some vintage text underneath that, which is the other reason why I wanted to work on the craft card because um, vintage text, that sort of brown tone text on the, the craft is just a match made in heaven. It works really, really well. To pop the stars out from the background a little bit, I'm just going around with my paint pen, really, really scribbly. Um, not really thinking about it at all. You can see how messy they are. I am going around each star twice with my black paint pen to pop them out from the background. So I talked about how vintage text works really well with the craft. If you want a colour that sort of really blends in beautifully with craft card as well, copper is fantastic. So I've actually stenciled those stars in copper. And you can see how it sort of blends into the page. So by putting the black around the outside, it just sort of pops it out from the background a little bit, gives it a little bit more form on the page. Once I've finished sketching that, I'm just trying to work out where I want to put my image on the page. And I really like how that sort of looks with the stars popping out from behind him. But I did decide I wanted a few more stars on the page. So I just went back in, filled up some of the gaps with a little bit more because you know, you can never have too many stars on the page. I think I actually end up covering over some of those stars I've just put in, but there you go. You know, that's how it happens. So, um, always when you're working, I suppose, and you're not a hundred percent sure, um, do the minimum that you want on the page. You can always add more in afterwards. It's always a little bit harder to take it off or to work out how to cover it over at the end. So, um, less is more. And then you can always add in more afterwards if you decide you do need a little bit more. How many times can you say more in a sentence? 
So once I have worked out where I want to put my image, I really liked it, but I needed to ground my image. So um, one of the things I find when I'm doing artwork like this is I always need to connect my focal points to an edge somewhere. So you can sort of see that stenciling is connected to the top edge and it's kind of connected to the right hand edge as well because it's connected to that block of color that's connected to the edge. The die cut that I had here would have been floating in mid-air if I hadn't put something on the bottom. What I chose to use is a piece out of the Dina Wakeley Collage Collective. Um, you could use a piece of scrapbooking paper if you didn't have that. And I chose a piece that had similar colours to the background in it. Sort of had those sort of purpley, blacky, coppery tones to it that sort of um, fitted in with the background a little bit. With a torn white edge as well, it gives it a little bit of a... Um, definition to the finished piece and because I had the space at the edge I decided to put a quote in which I didn't necessarily need but I'm a, on a bit of a, a quote kick at the moment um, I'm using my journal a lot to just get a lot of stuff out of my system or tell myself a lot of stuff so um, I, I quite like this particularly sort of with that really strong silhouette of the man there um, if you've made your point stop talking because there's so many people, and myself included, who make your point and then keep talking and talk yourself out of the point or just, you know, people stop listening to you. So sometimes it's good to, to say your piece and actually stop talking um, at the end. So it's a lesson that I know I need to learn. And I know a few other people around me that need to learn as well. <laughs> but there you go. Um, but I, I, I do like how this sort of balanced up the page at the end too. So with my quote you saw me write out the paint pen to begin with and now I'm just going in with my finer paint pen and just extending some of the up and down strokes and um, putting sort of little triangular bits on them widening out the ends a little bit. With my A's because I had the room to I'm putting on the top part of the A. Um, I, I like doing this writing my quote out because first of all it um, works out my spacing for me then I can go back in and where I've got room I can sort of extend my letters if I need to which um, is really really handy. Obviously if you're a little bit concerned about your handwriting um, you can write it out in pencil first. I find that I like to write in paint pen um, to begin with. I was being a bit brave on this page because usually when I write with paint pen I've written on a page that is absolutely covered in acrylic paint and that means if I make a mistake I can wipe it away. Now if I'd done that on this page and made a mistake because I was actually writing onto the raw craft paper that paint pen has actually already seeped into the page so if I'd made a mistake on this page I would have had to paint over or stick something over the top of it so just be aware if you are going to be I'll, I'll call myself brave <laughs> like me and write with paint pen to begin with um while it is forgiving on a completely gessoed or a completely acrylic painted background it's not if it's done onto raw paper so just be aware to make it pop out from the background i've also just gone around the edge of my image with some white pen and you can see that just makes it look like it's floating on top. The final little thing that I'm doing is just using my, I think I used an Intense pencil rather than a Stabilo Oil pencil, but either would work. And I've just added a little bit of a shadow around the side of my man so that it again pops him out from the background as well. So you, you have these images floating upon the background. And that's it. So um, it's a really, really simple page. I actually really liked it. It's a style that I want to explore a little bit more um, in the future. Uh, if you're interested in finding that die cut from Scrap FX, you'll find the details for that below in the description box. And until next time, bye for now.